why in the morning if it's tuesday it's entrepreneurship tuesday at y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at michelle ashira is where you can find me across all my social in this uh, particular session we dive into uh, an interview that looks at brand positioning we'll dive into this conversation look at how important how important it is to align yourself as a business owner when it comes to branding and what it entails in studio i am joined by anthony kiguta who is the managing director of ziprof technologies good morning anthony morning michelle how are you doing I'm good. how is your tuesday coming along it's coming along fine mm -hmm. we thank god fantastic yes. so briefly take us through who anthony kiguta is uh, where did you grow up and what, you, what exactly what do you do well mm, my background okay anthony kiguta is uh, born and raised in Nyeri County uh, in a family of three and um, growing up I grew up just like any other, and other kid, a firstborn for that matter and uh, all along I've come a long way uh, even coming to the point of not getting to school and all that. Uh, Zipro Technologies uh, evolved, speak on that, uh, is something that came along the way because initially is something uh, I was pursuing something totally different and uh, I was pursuing accounting but I developed some passion in IT and uh, it's something I decided now I need to pursue this. Uh, growing up uh, we were not so much exposed to technology you know in Nyeri County interiors and all that so when I came to the city uh, I got that exposure and I got to learn much about IT processes and uh, now I decided to pursue that passion. Oh, yes. Nice, nice. So our conversation today is on brand position, the positioning of a brand. Yes. And uh, let's look at what is brand positioning? Brand position is, is uh, the process you undertake in placing the brand in the mind of your customer how the customer will perceive your brand. Uh, you may come up with very nice colors, you know, the logo, the tagline and all that, but you need now to position that in the mind of the customer. Yes. All right, and mm. how do you achieve that? Uh, one, one of the ways is you, okay, let me just take you all through the steps. You okay. need to understand yourself because in one or another, whether you are aware of it or not, you're doing some bit of brand positioning. You start a company and uh, there's a way now people get to perceive about you. And now you need to position yourself in the right way. You need to identify how you're doing it, how other people are doing it. Uh, you analyze that, compare that. What is your unique uh, element? What is your brand bringing in that is unique, different from the rest? Now you need now to position yourself in such a way that people now get that uh, element that it comes out clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are various strategies that you can employ. Yeah, I was heading there. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes. There are some uh, ways you can approach it. Okay. You can approach it from the angle of quality. That is quality-based positioning, where you, you are communicating the quality you are bringing on the table. I'm bringing you, uh, possibly you're developing an, a software, for example. This is something that is uh, reliable. This is something that is unique to the market. So that element of quality needs to come out clearly. Uh, that is when you're taking the quality-based approach. Uh, there's also the price-value approach. Um, there's the general perception among customers that uh, when something is quite pricey, uh, it must be good. Oh yes, we always think that uh, if it's actually expensive, it has to be of good quality. It has to be of good quality. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to go that way, you can still take it, but you also need to match to that, so that when they are buying it, they don't get frustrated along the way. Then you also don't want to price yourself so low, so that uh, <laughs> you, you know someone is like, "Are you, are you guys serious? Are you serious? Are, are you, you serious in what you are doing?" <laughs> the other. Uh, approach you can take when you're doing the positioning, you can look at uh, the problem and solution. Mm -hmm. 
where you're communicating to the customer this, the, I know your problem and I have this, this solution for you. Uh, I think uh, it's very common in those vernacular stations you hear, have you been doing this, this and that? We have this solution for you. And it's still an approach that you can take. Uh, it needs much of research. You need to go back to your customer, get to identify clearly what is their problem so that now you can then come in and present a solution oh, for yeah. them. Right. Yeah. Another thing is, I like what you said, that if I come uh, onto, the, you know, onto the picture and I give a very low pricey yes. uh, quotation, then mm. they, will que they will question uh, how legitimate I am yes. and how the quality of what I'm offering. Mm. So let's take me through the fact that if I'm, business, um, I'm building a business profile for yes. me, for <coughs> a business, mm. uh, probably I'm just starting off. Yes. How do I go about it? About, uh, you need first to identify what you're selling. Because then, uh, what you're selling, you need to give value to it. You don't want to uh, sell something just for the sake of making an extra coin. Mm -hmm. It needs to match that. So, even when you're doing your profiling, you need to profile based on your product or your service. So that you align yourself in such a way that, really, when you're presenting that business profile to someone, they are like, okay. You understand your thing. So if you knew you asked this this much, yes, you understand your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So you've been into business uh, in the space of technology yes. for approximately seven years now? Yes, since so, uh, 2014. Since 2014. Yeah. And you left employment in 2018. In 2018. Uh, 2018. Something uh, I was doing it on the side, you know, there you do a side hustle, you pursue. But then with time you realize this is where my passion is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. and you get into business and here we are right now sure. so why does positioning matter for a business it matters because uh, uh, you know the the position in the mind of people uh, how they perceive your brand if they perceive uh, your brand uh, is is low quality mm -hmm. then your growth wouldn't be as better compared to some, uh, to a position where people feel, oh, this is something I can identify with, this is something I can grow with. For example, uh, like in our case, we have positioned ourselves as a go-to people who, for small-scale uh, startups, SMEs and the rest. So when they come to us, they need to, to feel, okay, this person understands us and uh, the kind of solution I need they'll be able to, to give me. So based on the first impression they got about us and how we have positioned ourselves in the market and our competitors, they are able to identify and also give you business. Mm -hmm. Yes, so if you don't position yourself well, you'll fail terribly. All right. Yes. We've looked at uh, the brand positioning and this, the brand positioning strategy. Yes. So let's look at what makes a winning position. A winning uh, position. Yeah. A winning position, I would say, is striking a balance between all of them. Because you may pick one, and along the way, you may burn out. Uh, for example, if you focus on price alone, you'll find uh, there's another client who doesn't mind about the, the price. When I come to you, I need a solution. Money is not a problem. So if you had centered your whole approach on price, you'll, you'll fail. Mm -hmm. Because that person will come picking holes into the quality you are assuring them. Is the solution giving me quality? Is it solution go, uh, coming to solve just a section of my problems? So if you employ pricing, then along the way you bring in the element of uh, the benefit your communicator, you are giving them, they feel, okay, this is the person I need to work with, mm -hmm. yes. All right, before we actually continue, I think like it's better, to, it's best this is the time where we can look at uh, different types of positioning, yes. different types of brand positioning. Uh, okay, uh, I would say they are quite interlinked with the strategy it has used. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there is a way you can position yourself uh, as a solution provider, like in our case, okay. as a solution provider. Uh, this, uh, okay, for us it's a, it's a service. There are people uh, who may go to uh, sell, mm -hmm. they're selling products. Mm -hmm. uh, so the product is not necessarily, possibly it's a, it's a cosmetic thing. There are people, they can do away without it. Yeah, but you need now to communicate that to them. So you need to position yourself in such a way that you are 
you are rhyming with uh, the customer needs. Yes. Uh, still speaking about customers. So why should I use uh, my consumers to develop my positioning? Because they are the ultimate people who will support and keep you afloat. Because if you if you develop a solution and you are you're forcing people into it, uh, they'll, they'll keep away from you because they need to essentially when they come to you they are looking for a solution mm -hmm. so if uh, you are working the other way like you are you are bombarding them with you know information bombarding just just uh, we sell this we sell this we sell this without getting to understand what they really need it will frustrate you because uh, okay, they'll, you'll have a tr few trials. People, okay, there are those people who are risk takers, the customers, but others are not risk, take, risk takers. They, they really have a defined uh, thing they are looking for. Yes. So it is very important you work from the customer feedback, customer responses, and you work together with them. All right. Yeah. And, uh, in what you do, actually, you guys yeah. offer digital marketing? We offer web developing, we offer IT digital marketing, I, I see, I, IT consulting, yes. Yes, when you look at the digital marketing space yeah. and yeah. brand positioning, how yeah. important is it when it comes to uh, people into the business world, mm -hmm. uh, including just an inclusion of uh, digital marketing yeah. in just putting their brand out there? Uh, the internet, I would say, is a very big market. It's it's an ex uh, it's yet to be fully exploited I would, I would say so and uh, when you are alone you know you're just in that car shop uh, or in that car service area if you just keep around you know the people close to you and all that you limit yourself but when you uh, get into digital marketing you're marketing your product to people out there uh, you'll get uh, limitless possibility, limitless, limitless opportunities. And I think uh, during this pandemic, has, it has really opened up our eyes on the power and the importance of digital marketing. I remember when we got into the whole issue of you know, lockdowns and the rest, uh, we, we got approaches from several clients who are like, how do we get into the uh, digital space? And uh, we helped uh, quite a number of them uh, just to, you know, position themselves out there now in the online market. And it is very important because you continue even to uh, get referrals out there. You continue to tap into other markets that possibly you are not even aware of. Uh, like in, for just for our, our case, there are clients who call even from out of the country. Uh, I have never maybe gone to that particular country, but the, we have our digital marketing team working in, day out, and positioning our brand out there, and we get uh, inquiries, we get business, so it's very important to get into the digital marketing. Yeah. So I want to use this opportunity to, uh, to you know, to dig into the fact that <laughs> you also offer IT consultancy. Mm. So how important is it, uh, just uh, from, from still in the digital marketing yes. space? Uh, apart from social media, mm -hmm. what else can we do? Because I understand you also do web development. Yes. What mm. else can we do just to put our, our brand out there? Apart, because mm. when you talk about digital marketing, yes. uh, the internet space, we just think about social media. What yeah. else? Social media is just one component yes. of digital marketing. And uh, many have employed it. It's working. Uh, I would say it's working, especially in the Kenyan market. But you need also to explore the other opportunities for yourself. And uh, first you need to create a space of your own, and that is in the form of a website. Mm -hmm. You need to have a website where you're displaying your products, where you're communicating your vision, mission, uh, your target market and all that, because maybe it's not necessarily a product-driven uh, business. It's more of a service-driven uh, business. So people need to, to have somewhere they can come to and learn more about you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, would, I would highly recommend you start from that base, get a website. Mm -hmm. Then also now you need to also get into the uh, another uh, digital marketing aspect we call as, uh, search engine marketing, where you, you work with the search engines. You, can, uh, you, you make payments, you 
pay per according to your keywords possibly you would want people to uh, to reach out or to get to your website using a certain keyword the best filmmakers the best you can pay for that that is search engine marketing you can pay and also you can also uh, use uh, something we call search engine optimization that is done on your website where you optimize your website such that now the search engine can uh, rank you better uh, so that you, people can now get to learn about you. There's also what we call ad display where you can work with the marketing agents, uh, Google being one of them. Uh, they, they, have, they can tap into many websites like uh, you work, you get into like a betting website uh, it's it's very common mm -hmm. you'll get some pop-ups here and there so you need to work with such agencies to display your adverts out there uh, you may not know which is the best in terms of traffic the website which is the best website to advertise on <laughs> but when working with the agencies they are able to tell you oh, okay this and this website we can place your advert here so that is also another part of digital marketing. All right. Yeah. Looking back, seven years ago, mm. we're still starting off, you know, the new kid in the block. Yes. A couple of mistakes that you made when it, uh, when it, when it came to just uh, uh, putting your brand out there to the public. Um, wh one of the challenges I had is lack of, of confidence of what I'm selling. And uh, you, you enter into a boardroom full of, you know, the guys who mm. make the, the decision, you, you lack that confidence. And uh, what possibly I would say, uh, I work towards that building my capacity because one of the uh, reasons why you are not conf confident is your capacity. You are doubting mm. your capacity. Uh, I, I remember it was one instance I got into, it's, it's a government uh, entity and it's full of people who actually know less about IT. And they are like they're asking those small, small questions, and you're like, okay, uh, I didn't, I didn't think this would be an issue. I need to explain. So, uh, with time, I got to build my capacity in that. Uh, the other, the other one was uh, in terms of marketing. You place your money where it's not really giving you any returns. Uh, okay, you feel okay. This is working for so and so. Uh, I also need to put some money in there, and you realize, oh their product is not matching mine, or rather my position is very different from them. So your approach uh, needs to be uh, in line with what you're selling. So some of the mistakes I did is like, you know, just place an advert out there. Just, uh, I remember like paying uh, a daily, you know, and you're like, the people who call you are people looking for work, not really people who are like coming to give you business. You may, uh, the paper or rather the daily may work for someone else, but it, it may not work for your case. So you need to understand which are the avenues mm. that can work actually for your marketing case. Oh, and you mentioned something very important about building capacity. Yes. So how can we, uh, for just business startups that yes. are getting into the market, mm. you know, they're trying to put their brand out there for yeah. their target market. Mm. So how can they build their own capacity? Uh, uh, one, start, start with someone who is already into it. Get a mentor. Mm -hmm. Get a mentor. At times, the capacity may not be on the papers. Uh, possibly you already have the papers. You need, you need someone who will guide you like, okay, I, I want to try this. Uh, like for my case, I have my mentor. Once in a while, give him a call. Uh, I'm thinking of doing this. And he's like, okay, Tony, don't try that. Don't try that. That won't work. So that is one element. Then continually learning. There's no end to learning. There are so many resources out there. Get online, mm -hmm. get to YouTube, learn much uh, uh, about your field, anything revolving around your business, anything revolving about your product. If it is a product that deals with elements, uh, things like ingredients, it's a food product. Learn about those ingredients. Is there something you can do with the ingredients? Is this something you can adjust on one flavor also mm -hmm. that can make that difference? So continue learning every day. Don't, uh, there's no end to learning. Because yeah. no there are new trends coming up. There I are believe. new trends. There are and new trends. Yeah. Yes. So let's look at um, a couple of, uh, for 
you know, when it comes to this space of uh, branding, a yes. couple of lessons that you've learned along the way, because mm. you looked at a couple of uh, mistakes that you made. Yes. So a couple of lessons mm. that you've learned along the way as you grow. As, as I grow, uh, branding is very important. Uh, uh, what, uh, like in our case, we started with and our focus was uh, to present the professional element of it. Uh, because uh, in our field, there, there are quite a number of quirks. <laughs> and uh, it's something we needed to really communicate out there, like we do it in a professional way. And yeah. also <coughs> going for to, uh, to the right person for information. Sure, sure, sure. You, you really need to have uh, even a support system within your business. Like, okay, uh, who can guide me on this? Who can guide me on this? And uh, what? also learn from the rest. Learn from other brands. How, 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 how are they positioning something? How are they presenting themselves? So that now, when you come in, you have your own uh, uniqueness. Yes. So that is something I I learned. I didn't want to go to okay. I'm seeing so and so is doing this. I want to do exactly this. Mm -hmm. Learn from this person. Learn from this person. Learn from another person. Then develop now your own brand mm -hmm. based on what you do oh. and what you're good at. Yes. Be authentic. Yes. All right. Yeah. And a couple of challenges that you faced uh, while just coming up with a brand which is unique to the market. Um, okay, on the brand element, there are times you may want to, uh, possibly want to get into the space of advertising to the level like uh, we were really looking into getting into big advertising, you know, billboard and the rest. And you, face, you, you find you don't have the finances. You, for, okay, finances is a major challenge to many startups. Mm -hmm. And at times you feel mm, without these finances, I can't go much. You mm -hmm. feel uh, you're not really doing it. Very uh, chief, especially if you want to get into mainstream. You, it's a very media. major yes. challenge. And um, getting even to the media, you want to communicate your brand out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you look at those red cards and you're like, uh, I, need, I need to work more. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were really working, and also collaborations. Uh, mm -hmm. At times, you want to collaborate with partners and they are not even sure about your brand. Uh, okay, you're a new kid in the block and uh, are you really sure about this? So some of the challenges we, we met along the way are uh, some of those, where you approach people and you're like, okay, let me give you a few, two or three more years, then mm -hmm. you come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you cap that? The whole situation of challenge, challenges being like example finances, mm -hmm. and the people who uh, you're able to win the, the, the trust, credibility aspect of it. So how do you cap that situation? Uh, in terms of winning their confidences, mm -hmm. continue doing what you're good at because with time they'll get to notice it. Mm -hmm. At times you would, uh, we would do that. Then along the way, then someone, the same person calls you. Uh, I, I saw you are doing this. Come, we talk. Mm -hmm. I saw you are doing this. It's the same people you are approaching on, an, on uh, possibly a different issue, but now they have seen you are really serious about this. You are, you are serious about getting into this business in that level. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of finances, is you really need to control as much as you have expect expectations. You can't do everything at once. It's quite a process. You need to, you know, work on your financial discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to work within your limits. Work within your limits. Don't overprice. Don't go to the level of, you know, trying to exploit your customers <laughs> just to get that extra coin yeah. uh, to handle your cash flow issues. Mm. Yeah. Speaking about financial, uh, being being responsible in mm. terms of finances, a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way, as we wind up. Well, financial lessons at times, uh, one of, of them is uh, the one I've mentioned, live mm -hmm. within your limits. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in your personal life, if you don't live within your limits, it will flow even into your business. Oh, because yeah. you'll start even picking the little that the business is, is making, and uh, you don't have any reserve on the business. So the element of discipline uh, 
it's something I've learned, uh, I would say, in a hard way and in a good way. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I think, if any, guys, if you, if you want to pick anything from this interview or anything else, just pick the aspect of discipline. Because yes. I think it runs along uh, every aspect of our lives. Very sure. All right. So, yeah. Anthony Kiguta, thank you for creating time with, to be with us. Yes. Probably share your social media handles on how guys can reach out to you. Uh, my personal Twitter, Twitter handle, Instagram, all of my social media handles are at Tony Keguta. Tony is T O N I E mm -hmm. Keguta. And also now for the Ziprof, mm -hmm. uh, we are at Ziprof Tech. Mm -hmm. T E C H. Okay. For, in, uh, for Twitter, for Instagram is Ziprof underscore tech. For Facebook is Ziprof Technologies Limited. Oh. Thank you very yes. much, Anthony Kikuta, for creating time to be with us. Thank you so much. So uh, make sure you guys follow up with him to keep the conversation going. And if you have any question pertaining the uh, branding positioning, he's the guy to talk to. Yes. At Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. So we'll be right back with so much more right here on Entrepreneurship Tuesday. <laughs>